Hi everyone, I'm Marbos here, and this is a quick video to talk about city skylines to graphical settings. Now, I'm not going to talk much about <laughs> how this game is in dire need of optimization, because the entirety of the internet has already been talking about that. And to be clear, it's true, this game is not exactly optimized, let's just put it that way. The frame rate is really, really bad even if you have quite a powerful PC. However, the default settings that the game starts with are also really, really bad. And I'm going to show you much better settings, which are a decent compromise between quality and performance. Because you can just straight up set everything to low. However, the settings I'm going to show you give you a much better visual quality I mean, maybe not that much better, but definitely a better visual quality while not sacrificing a whole lot of frame rate. I am going to show you my actual performance with the overlay, and I'm going to show you the difference between 180p, 1440p with these settings, and then compare them to low settings on both these resolutions. Now, I am running an RTX 2080 Ti, and the 3900X CPU. It's mostly the GPU that makes the difference. And mine is not exactly top end, but it's not low end either. So if you're kind of like me and you have a PC that's not high end, not low end, just somewhere in the middle, you might find these settings useful. So without further ado, let's get into the options. I am currently in 180p. But again, I will show you 1440p with these settings as well. So let's just go from top to bottom. Depth of field should always be disabled. This is one of the bigger offenders when it comes to performance. And this is just the global preset. I will show you a comparison to low after. Dynamic resolution scale quality disabled. You can keep anti-aliasing uh, high at SMAA. You can change any of these settings that are at high to lower to get slightly better performance. But again, I find that these settings are a really good compromise between quality and performance. So anti-aliasing, high SMIA, clouds quality settings disabled, fog quality settings disabled, volumetrics disabled. You can keep ambient occlusion on high, but you can also disable it. It doesn't really make much difference visually. It does make a difference though. Global illumination, high. You can have it on high without losing too much FPS. Reflections quality low. You can also disable it if you like. Depth of field quality, this should always be disabled. Motion blur, this should also always be disabled. Motion blur is just terrible, but on top of that, it has a major impact on performance. But this kind of game really doesn't need motion blur at all. Shadow quality medium, you can also set it to low or disabled, like with everything else. Terrain quality settings, you can keep this on high with these settings without sacrificing too much FPS. But again, as with everything, you can also set it to medium or low to get slightly better frame rate. Water quality settings, medium. Now, level of detail, you can just set this to medium. However, what you should also do is go into advanced, scroll down, and then max out the geometry cache limit. Because by default, if you use very low, low, or even medium, this limit is pretty low and can lead to crashes, from what I found. So, yeah, I maxed it out at 4 gigabytes, and I recommend you do the same. Animation quality high, and the texture quality settings also high. So I do have quite a few settings here on high, and let me show you the frame rate. So this is a city I was building. It has 10k population. I will also show you a city with 100k population. And as you can see, I can stay at around 30 FPS with this. Which is obviously not that impressive, but considering how poorly this game runs on default settings, it's an improvement, let me tell you that. It's also an improvement over the initial builds that were made available. So hopefully we'll see some further optimization. Let's maybe run this on faster speed here. So very fast. I can zoom in a little bit. So it will stay around 30. 
most of the time. Now, my frame rate is usually a bit better when I'm not recording, like I am doing right now. So you can easily add a few frame rates to this. I can run at around 35 FPS with a 10k population city when I'm not recording or streaming. And now I'm going to show you a 100k population city. Now this is actually a save that was made available by the German magazine GameStar. I will post a link in the video description. If you want to download it yourself and test your own performance, you can do it there. I'll post a link in the video description. Okay, so here's the 100k pop city. And you will immediately notice that there isn't really much difference in performance between a 10k population city and 100k population city. Which is kind of the point of these settings. With my hardware, I could comfortably play a 100k pop city around 30 FPS. Now, obviously, a 30 FPS performance is not exactly great when the game doesn't even look that good, but this is what we got right now. <laughs> I'm not getting into like the whole performance issue because th there's nothing I could say that hasn't already been said by a lot of people out there on the internet. And I agree with all of it. This is a really poorly optimized game. Like there's not much else to add there. It should run at way higher than 28 FPS right now on my hardware. But it is what it is. This is where we're at. And again, if you still want to play and if 30 FPS doesn't bother you, I highly recommend using these settings. Now, let me show you how it's going to run on 1440p, which is actually my native resolution, by the way. So let's switch to 1440p. All right, here we are in 1440p. Now, this definitely has an impact on performance. So it's going to dip to like low 20s with a 100k city. You can play in 1440p with my kind of hardware for a while, but once your city gets much bigger, it will definitely start to struggle. I'm getting dips to around 15. This line here, 99% FPS, in case you don't know, means that 99% of the samples were above this value. But it definitely dips to under 20, pretty frequently on a 100k city. Now let me show you a 10k pop city with this. Okay, so this is a 10k population city. I can actually get around 30 FPS when I'm not recording or streaming with these settings on 1440p, which is, again, not great, and it shouldn't be this way, but it's decent and it's playable. It's kind of sad because I don't really have a lot of complaints about City Skylines 2 that aren't related to performance or crashes. And these are some massive problems. They are definitely deal breakers for most people, I would say, for anyone who isn't running like a 4090. But if they fix performance, which should have been fixed for release, but if they fix performance, this is actually a really good game. Yeah, see, there are definitely some dips there. Which is why it's better to run at 1080p, which you shouldn't have to. If you told me a month ago that I'll struggle to run this game or any similar game, and I'll have to drop to 1080p, and that I won't even be able to get constant 30 plus FPS in 1080p, I would have laughed at you. I would have straight up laughed at you. Yeah, you can see here that it does drop to like low 20s sometimes. So there's a major impact on performance. Now let me show you a comparison to low settings. Let's switch back to 1080p first. And remember to add a few frames to this value because I get a slightly better frame rate when I'm not recording or streaming. So you can easily add like 3-4 FPS, maybe 5 FPS to this. Now, okay, now let me just switch to low. Straight up low, the actual preset. So let's switch to low, not the very low. Very low looks actually terrible. So we'll just go straight up low and keep all of these settings here. Now, there are a few you can disable to gain a lot of FPS. 
These default presets are really, really bad. This is one of the big problems with this game. The default presets are just straight up bad. Like, see, there isn't really even a difference. Look at how much worse this looks. And this is on low preset. And I'm getting basically the same FPS, almost the same. It's more constant, I'm not getting as many dips. But the baseline is very similar, and look at how much worse the game looks with this. It looks awful, it actually looks terrible. So do not ever use the default presets, they are just straight up bad. What can you do to make this look better? Okay, so here's what you can do. One thing you can do is disable dynamic resolution scale quality. So disable that. You can turn up anti-aliasing to low SMIA. The difference should be marginal. You should definitely disable volumetrics. You should disable motion blur. And you should disable depth of field quality. These are some of the biggest offenders in terms of frame rate. I tend to also disable clouds. This doesn't have as much impact, but it still has Im an impact. And I disable fog quality settings. Honestly, from my perspective, fog actually makes things look worse while dropping your frames. So I just disable it. And this is mostly it. You can keep the rest. You can also change a few more things, but let me show you the difference now. See? It looks much sharper. And the frame rate is basically the same. The biggest culprit here, out of all of these settings that I changed, the single biggest culprit is dynamic resolution scale quality. If I set it to constant, okay, I would have to set it to uh, what the game actually used with the low preset. So let's uh, switch to low preset for a second. So this is low preset again see how bad it is right now if we change just that one single setting right now and disable dynamic resolution scale quality it looks much sharper right away with basically no impact on performance and it still looks better if i disable all these other things from my perspective the game just straight up looks better with fog disabled and all these other things like motion blur is actually awful who the heck uses motion blur in a game like this? What's wrong with you? Yeah, so disable depth of field, disable motion blur, disable volumetrics, and disable fog, and disable clouds. See how much better it looks now? It just straight up looks better. Now we can switch to 1440p with these settings. There, so this is 1440p. It will run just under 30 with this city. There's a big difference in frame rate between 1080p and 1440p, as you might imagine. It is a bit problematic for me because my native resolution is 1440p. Now let me load the 100k city to show you a quick comparison. So this is a modified low preset. Okay, so here we are. And as you will see, it will run just under 30, but it will dip to low 20s fairly frequently. Still, this is definitely playable, and it looks fine. It, it doesn't exactly look next-gen, to be clear, but it looks fine and it's playable. As long as, again, 30 FPS doesn't bother you. Which, it does bother me, but I don't find it totally unplayable. I mean, I played for many years with terrible frame rates back in like the 90s when I couldn't afford a better PC. <laughs> I have a higher tolerance for it, probably. But hopefully we'll see some optimization. It really shouldn't have released in this state, in my opinion. This is some of the worst optimized game that we've seen this year. And that's saying a lot, because we've seen some really terribly optimized games this year. You can see that it does drop to sub-20 sometimes. But this is a 100k city. This is a pretty big city. It can obviously get much bigger than this. But you won't get to 100k population for quite a while. You can get to 10,000 in probably, I don't know, 5-6 hours, depending on how fast you are. But you can speedrun in 
10k population city in a few hours. Probably faster than that. And uh, yeah, I think that's about it. So I hope you will find these settings useful. Remember, never use the default preset without changing some of the settings. And uh, I would highly recommend setting geometry cache limit to max. It reduced the number of crashes for me. Unfortunately, I still crash to desktop sometimes, so it's not the only cause, but it's one of the major causes. It's definitely one of the causes. So I would just straight up set this to maximum. So to repeat one more time before we wrap up this video, a few of the settings that you should generally always disable are volumetrics, right here, depth of field, and the motion blur. Personally, I also disable fog and clouds. For me, fog just makes everything look worse. Like, I really don't like the fog. That's just me, though. For me, it just makes it look worse and it reduces my frame rate. So it's a loss loss. However, that's going to be the end of this video. I hope you found uh, some of it useful. So uh, leave a like if you did. And uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.